Hey, what's going on guys? It's me, Aaron, with Evolution Daily. Warning, today's video is for the hardcore fans. If you just like to watch the infield, then uh, go ahead and tune back in tomorrow. I will have an infield for you tomorrow. But in this video, I dive deep. I did about a 30 minute Facebook Live rant wherein I really just explained a lot of the benefits that I've gotten out of pickup. I dive deep into my very beginnings when I first discovered all of this, when I first started losing weight, when I started getting my entire life together, and I break down a lot of the awesome experiences that I've had in pickup, as well as the levels of groundedness and presence that I really think that I've benefited from the most along this journey. I end up talking about this really bad panic attack that I had while public speaking. I talk all about um, my beginnings in stand-up comedy. It just goes deep. So if you've ever just really, really wanted to know a lot more about me, then definitely stay tuned and enjoy this video. Maybe make something in the kitchen or take a shower while you listen to it. Listen to it like a podcast. Whatever you want to do, but it's a long one and it goes really, really deep. And honestly, I'm really proud of it. I really am. I did this. It was a Facebook Live video. I was completely uninhibited, unfiltered, and I just go, like I said, I mean, just really deep on a lot of concepts, a lot of ideas, and really deep personally about my own personal development and my journey and pickup. And I think that if you guys are a big fan of the channel or me or you learn things from myself in the channel, then then you're really going to enjoy this one. Now, if you want to catch these live, then add me on Facebook. My name is Aaron Alexander, and I'll go ahead and link that below. You can also join my Facebook group, Evolution Daily, which will also be linked below. Enjoy the video. Yo, what's up, guys? Hey, yo. I, uh... I figured I'd just kind of hop on here. I'm just kind of having some thoughts. And I just feel so... I feel like one of the things that I've gotten the most from game and from self-development really over the last few years or so is sort of just this, this overwhelming feeling at times of just being very grounded and just being very zen. I've never really gotten into meditation in any kind of way. Um, I used to do this five-minute uh, Tim Ferriss meditation that he teaches where you essentially sit there and uh, you sit there and you just listen to the same song each day. And I used to listen to a song called Bluish by Animal Collective. And uh, I would just sit there and I'd, I'd meditate against the wall. And I did that for, I think I did that for like 15 days once. And, and that was cool, definitely. But I've never really gotten, and that's like a six minute song, I believe. Uh, but I've never really gotten that deep into meditation or anything like that. But I think that just through the years, I'd say the last four to five, about four years now of constantly constantly gaming um taking care of my weight i mean you look at me now and obviously i'm i'm not jacked i'm not super thin anything like that but you know i'm currently at about 187 pounds and i'm the strongest i've ever been in my life and that's down from being 290 pounds at one point um, which that's something I don't really talk about that much on the channel or anything like that. I mean, I bring it up for sure, but like, I don't really have like, I don't know. I'm not really trying to teach weight loss. I don't know. I use Tim Ferriss's four hour body, uh, slow carb diet. That's what I did. I lost over a hundred pounds in that way. And, uh, you know, I'm no fucking expert. I don't know what the fuck it is. Yeah, I don't know how to teach that. I, I would never, I don't know. Maybe someday I'll put out a video on it. Who knows? We'll see. But it's something I don't really talk about a whole lot because it's not really that relevant to uh, teaching you guys game. It's not. Um, but I just feel so, like, lately, I just feel so, like, zen. And, like I said, kind of just grounded. And that's one of the keys that I think uh, 
I think that really assists in gaming both groups and hot girls. Um, the, the, the really hot girls. I had a, um, I didn't pull her or anything like that, but she's being responsive in, in the text messages. Uh, two nights ago, I gamed this chick. Her name was Taylor, and uh, I gamed her at this venue in Columbus, and it's sort of a, a venue that me and my wings just really started going to a lot, which uh, it's cool because we, we've got such a wide variety. We've got college bars, we've got big clubs, We've got uh, this area of kind of like hipster bars, and this is one of the hipster bars. And, uh, yeah, I mean, just this real fucking hottie. I mean, just the, she walks, you know, she comes into the bar, you see her, and you're just like, God damn. And I never actually actively went and approached her, but rather, um, something you guys have probably heard me talking about in uh, the YouTube videos, and, and maybe these videos as well, is just that lately my style of game has been a lot more of a, uh, whatever you want to call it, a bonfire style, a spider webbing style, where I'm kind of just hanging out with a bunch of my wings. Girls will come by, and then we'll kind of just grab them and pull them in, you know, either kind of troll them, goof on them a little bit, or just, you know, just physically escalate right off the bat, things to that nature. And this girl was no different, and she's just... I don't know. I don't know if I'd call her a 10. I, I don't really know what to call her. Just super fucking hottie in my mind. Just kind of like a perfect fucking girl. Beautiful blonde girl. Very slim body. Great ass. Great tits. Long blonde curly hair. This hot shirt that had like cuts on the sides. And then kind of like these like cuts in the front. And you could just like see just the right amount of cleavage, you know. And just, just a very attractive girl, and um, I don't remember exactly how I opened her, but it ended up that I then, you know, sort of really got up in her grill, which uh, is something that I think a lot of guys lack, most definitely, is really, really not just going through the motions, but rather, like, really putting yourself up in there and like, hey, this is fucking happening now, we're talking, you're gonna fucking stand here and we're gonna fucking do this thing now. And so I really got it, you know, I really uh, ended up against the wall and uh, me looking out, her looking at me into the wall. And I just remember, like, even in that moment, because this whole idea of being more grounded is something I've been really like, talking about a lot lately and thinking about a lot lately. Um, and I remember just talking to her and just the things I was saying and, and the way that I was behaving, I remember just thinking, like, I just felt very just, woof, woof, woof. Just fucking just grounded, just no shakiness, no no nervousness in my in my cheeks, no shakiness, no sort of adrenaline rush of any kind, and I just really fucking stood there. I qualified her, I talked to her, I did everything I could to build attraction. I got very sexually playful with her, I got very physical with her, and we just had it was a really fucking good set. The fact of the matter is she was going off to another bar with her friend that she was with to go meet up with some of their other friends. And I was there with my wings. And so I said, well, hey, let me get your number and uh, we'll talk soon. Got her number, texted her the next day, which because uh, this was two nights ago. So it was yesterday. And uh, yeah, I mean, she seems like she's going to be down to hang out this Tuesday or Wednesday and we'll see what's up. And uh, not only that, but at the beginning of this, I mentioned the uh, I mentioned the whole thing about groups as well. I think that the key to gaming groups is really uh, is this idea of being grounded as well. I think that it's just uh, I think that it's it's when you just feel chill because you're not trying to you're not trying to perform. You're not trying to entertain. You're not trying to get everyone there to like you and you're in because that's how you start to get flustered i have for sure time and time again gone in the game of big group of girls i mean i make i make inappropriate approaches like i've said for a while now that i really wish that i could somehow have a camera on me when like i don't know the camera's there so I'm not talking about infield. I'm not talking about like me running around with my foot. Like I wish that I could somehow like be secretly recorded in like my day to day so that like 
guys could see how much I'm really approaching. And not only that, but, like, just like I said, like, these kind of, like, inappropriate approaches. Like, me and my dudes, we'll go to, like, we'll go to this restaurant called Pint House. And we go there pretty much. I didn't go today because I went to breakfast with uh, with a chick this morning. But uh, some of my buddies were in town. And we'll go to this place called Pint House. And I will literally, like, go up. I'll try to get, like, one of my dudes to do it with me. Sometimes they will. Sometimes they won't. But I'll, like, go up to a table of girls. And I'll see, like, an open seat. And I'll go, like, scoop it up. And I'll just sit there and be like, what's up? And I'll just fucking go. They'll be like, hi. Like, how's it going? I'll be like, what's up? I'm Aaron. And just start getting playful with them and just having a really good time with them. And I think that the key to that, as I said, is just being very grounded and very chill and just trying to not fucking, not feeling like you need to fucking perform at all levels all the fucking time. Give me some, give me some uh, likes and some hearts if you, if you agree with this. I need the, I need the validation, but, and it's this level of groundedness that I think has honestly just come from throwing myself into the fire relentlessly. Um, and, and it's, it's both in game, it's, it's in game and it's also in stand up comedy, which a lot of you guys know that I did stand up comedy for, uh, quite some time before I even ever got into before I ever really even got into pickup, I was doing stand-up comedy. And I've always said that I almost feel like when I got really heavy into pickup, that I almost had like an unfair advantage. Because I was so used to already throwing myself to the god, like, dude, stand-up for me. And I met some people, just like you'll meet a guy who just started in pickup and he's really good, like, like right off the bat, and you, you kind of consider him a natural with uh, stand-up, it's the same thing. I mean, some people would come onto the stand-up comedy scene in Columbus, Ohio, and they'd start, and they would just be golden right off the bat. I mean, they would just be really good. They were good writers, and they kind of had some charisma to them, and they were fine. And just like in pickup, I had to work really hard to get good at stand-up. Um, I had, uh, I'll just tell this quick little story right now about a really bad panic attack that I had one time that made starting stand-up comedy really difficult for me. I've always been a very big fan of Joe Rogan podcasts and stand-up comedians and things of that nature. And so I always knew that I wanted to do stand-up comedy. And I was planning on doing it uh, when I was like 21. I was going to do it. And then what ended up happening is, uh, and I, I kind of said like, okay, in a few months I'm going to get going with it. Well, I was attending a class at The Ohio State University. It was one of my anthropology courses. And while I was in that class, we had to give a speech. And back then, I was very overweight, as I said in the beginning of this video, 290 pounds. Um, I had a really bad, I think like it caused me to like be like fucked up, just like all in my, my whole body. So I had like this really bad acne as well. And I honestly didn't even like people like looking in my face. I hated my pictures being taken. I hated just like having any sort of attention on me. There was just no confidence there whatsoever. And as I was, uh, you know, we, we had to give this group speech. I mean, it wasn't even just me up there. It was me and the whole group. And uh, we had to take turns doing our individual slides. And while I was up there, while I was giving my presentation, I essentially, I even like get a little anxiety thinking about it now. I was like fucked up. I think I have like legit PTSD from it, but basically it comes my turn to start giving my slides and I'm sweating, bro. Like I'm in front of this whole class. There's like 40 people or something. Not even a big deal. Um, and I'm like sweating and I'm so nervous and I like wore this hoodie and it ended up being really warm in the classroom that day. And so I was really just wigging out and um, I go up there to start speaking and to give my, my to give my slides to give my portion of the presentation and all of a sudden I'm just like I start just my heart is fluttering it's getting faster and faster and faster and faster and I feel myself sweating and I feel my voice starting to shake and I'm just like you know having a really hard time getting out the words and, I, and I'm like choking I'm like choking on my own fucking words and then I start to realize it's happening. And as I become omnicognizant of the situation of what's going down, it gets worse and worse and worse. And I just start like whiting out. 
I'm just freaking the fuck. Like, I'm whiting out entirely. And I'll never forget my professor. She's sitting in the back of the room watching our presentations. And she thought that I couldn't pronounce the next word. And I think it was just the word understand or something like that. It was like a, like not a big word, but not like a tiny, like it was just like a medium sized word. And I remember like she could she thought that I just couldn't pronounce the word. And so she like said it. I think it was the word understand. And she's like, she's like, understand, understand. And I'm like, I'm like, I know the, I know the word. I, I know the word. And I like snapped on her in front of the class. And now I'm just starting to realize like everything's happening. And I'm whiting out and I like, can't see. And I'm just like freaking the fuck out. And I literally just leave the classroom. I just leave the fucking classroom. I go out into the hall and I just like freak the fuck out. I'm like, I'm like hitting this fucking locker. I'm like drinking, I'm like chugging water out of this fountain. And like, I'm just like sitting outside. I'm just like sitting outside until the end of the class. And the class lets out and I go in and I, I like get my stuff. And it was just so horrible because then I had to like go back to that class each day. And it was like traumatic. I would go into that class and I'd be like freaking the fuck out, dude. Because I was like, God, everybody remembers me as like that guy that had the fucking panic attack during the speech. It was really fucking awful. And so then that prolonged me doing stand up. I was like probably going to do it in the next few months. Then I didn't end up doing it until the next year. Um, and I just, it was, so when I started doing stand-up comedy, it was really, really hard for me to stay on stage like that and for me to like really, uh, you know, to, to perform and do well and things. And so then I constantly had to push myself past that pressure because at the time I really wanted to get like famous at stand-up. I actually ended up getting pretty good at it and I'll still do it now from time to time, but it's been a little while and I'm thinking about getting a little more back into it now. Especially now that I'm doing um, Evolution Daily full time, I do think that it would actually really assist in my my speaking skills for when I am doing seminars and things to that nature. And I think that it would really just help and aid in my overall self development, improvisational skills, and and things to that nature. And so um, I definitely see stand up as being like a very very uh, viable tool for for people that are really trying to get good at pickup. I mean, I say it all the time, and uh, I actually said it to one of my wings. Uh, uh, my, my buddy Alex, and uh, he told me that he likes to freestyle rap as a form of, of improvisational uh, uh, abilities, you know, building and things of that nature. And I, uh, I thought that was pretty cool, you know, I never really thought about that. But then, um, you know, some of my wings will be over at the house and we'll kind of like freestyle rap now and, and things like that. And it's kind of fun. And it really is. It, anything that kind of puts you on the spot and gets you to like sort of be forced to speaking, uh, to speak, even these Facebook lives, to be honest with you, it's kind of like there's something different about this than when I'm just talking into the DSLR, uh, which is what I normally use to record my videos. Because right now, I like have to keep talking. Like, I can pause. I can pause. Like, you guys aren't going to fucking mind if I pause by any means. If I want to drink my water, no one's going to care. But at the same time, it's almost like this like added pressure in a sense where it's like, all right, don't just stop talking on your Facebook Live. Like, don't just run out of things to say, just like when you're in the field. And uh, I think any time that you can have these things in your life that are constantly pushing you, like like the gym I've brought up and stand-up comedy I've brought up, and, and of course, hitting the field, man. I um, I don't know. I just, I don't think that, in 2017, right now, after we've seen what's possible, they've, what's, what's been, what have we seen lately? I mean, look at Donald Trump. I don't care about politics. I haven't, you probably go through my feed. I don't think I've posted a single thing about politics. I don't give a fuck, dude. I'm busy. I'm fucking busy. I don't give a fuck about politics, bro. I don't care about shit that has nothing to do with my life. And I get it, yes, I live in America, it does have something to do with my life, I get it, like, but at the same time, I'm just still so, like, happy to be living in, like, the land of the free, essentially, I, I love America, um, I don't think that a Hillary presidency or a Donald Trump presidency would be all that different as far as personal freedoms go and things of that nature, I definitely think that um, you know, I'm sure the economy would either be better or worse with one of them or what the fuck ever. But, and then in due time, a new candidate would come about and, and change things or fix things or make things work. I don't know, whatever. I just think it's all kind of going to stay the same for a while. Um, other than, you know, the, the possibility of like some sort of a global super war or something of that nature, which even then I don't think is really going to, uh, 
I think that people underestimate the United States, and I think that there will never actually be a World War III. And this is just a theory of mine. People love to throw around. They're saying it could be the beginning of World War III. World War III is right around the corner. I don't think so. I don't think that there will ever be a world war again. And this is just a theory from a completely uneducated guy. I don't know shit about politics. But my theory is that the United States government is so insanely powerful, like even beyond like our, like anything that we even know, that in the face of another potential boots on the ground kind of like, in, especially invasion, like in the face of anything that would potentially threaten the United States, I think that we would just pretty ruthlessly just start wiping people off the map and that there wouldn't really be a whole lot of blowback. Um, that's just me. I don't know. I don't know that. I, I guess I shouldn't have even really gone on this rant, but I guess just to bring this whole thing full circle, um, I kind of forget what I even called this video. What is this video even called? I do have my desktop open. I think it's called like something about like plowing through or something. Oh yeah, demanding demanding more from yourself and doing shit that sucks. I just think that before, you know, and I'm not where I want to be yet. I'm not where I want to be yet when it comes to um, business with, with game. I mean, I, I don't ever want to be, I don't think you should ever be where you fully want to be with game. I will never be. I will never be fully where I want to be with game. Um, until the day comes that I can bump into Taylor Swift and I can seduce her into being my fucking woman, then I'm never really going to be where I want to be with game. Uh, so, you know, I've got, I've got a long ways to go in both game and in, you know, business and with my body and in my own personal development of my mind and my own self-awareness and things to that nature. But the one thing that I do know is that I've come a long fucking way and I'm super proud of how far that I've come. I'm very, very proud of how far that I've come. And the thing that's really, really gotten me here is the day that I just woke up and I said, yo, I don't want to suck when I'm old. Like, that's what it kind of came down to for me. I don't want to suck when I'm old. Like, I hate, like, I feel bad, bro. Like, I feel bad when I see, like, older people and like they never really got it right they never figured it out they never sat down laid out a detailed plan and said to themselves i'm not only going to lay out this detailed plan but i'm going to take action on it how am i going to take action by being resourceful i'm going to fucking use the books at my disposal i'm going to use the resources i'm going to use the people at my disposal i'm going to network i'm going to get mentors I'm going to do these different things. They just never got it right. And it makes me super sad. And not in like a judgmental kind of like, no, oh, it sucks to be you kind of way. But in like a, fuck, I don't want to suck when I'm old. And I think that when I really started to have that realization and I, and I started to, you know, one of the stories that I tell a lot with, uh, when it comes to, you know, my beginnings in pickup is I talk about this one time when I was uh, I was about 20 years old, and I was talking to one of my best friends, my good buddy Dale, and uh, he's been one of my best friends since we were nine years old, and I was talking to him, and um, and he said he said to me, and he wasn't being mean, he wasn't being mean when he said it, but at that time in my life it was just true, but it hit me. He said to me, he said. I mean, come on, dude. You're, you're like, you're never actually going to fuck a hot girl. Like, I said something before that along the lines of, like, and then, like, I just, I really want to fuck so-and-so. Like, it was, like, a hot girl from, like, our high school or something like that. And he's like, come, dude. He's like, come on. You're never going to fuck a hot girl. And I was like, I know. And I just said it. I was just like, I know. Like, I, I had accepted the fact that, like, I wouldn't ever fuck a hot girl. Like, I literally had accepted that. Because at that point... When I was 20, I'd only had sex with one girl at that point, point. Um, and she was overweight and, and not really attractive or anything like that, you know, and so at that time in my life, that was my reality, and so I had to just, I had to say, I had to say, yo, that's not my fucking reality, that's my self-narrative, that's what I'm telling myself now, but is that true? Will I really never fuck a hot girl? And it wasn't until two years later that I discovered pickup, but I mean, during that time, you know, I had, I ended up sleeping with 
Before pickup, I had only slept with three girls before pickup. Um, and then uh, uh, I slept with three girls, and all of them very unattractive. And I, like I said, I never believed that I would actually hook up with hot girls. And then I discovered pickup. And when I discovered pickup, I was still very overweight. Um, I was, uh, at that time, yeah, still probably around 290 pounds. And, uh, forgive me for one second, I need to check the battery on my phone. Because I really, I feel like it wasn't too high when I started this. Oh, I can't turn it. Oh, well, if it dies, it dies. So, I was very overweight when I discovered pickup. And when I discovered it... It was this mind-blowing moment for me. It wasn't like I heard. I've heard of people who, you know, they discover it and they uh, they'll watch the stuff for a while and they'll kind of dabble and then maybe like a couple years later they'll get into it or something like that. But um, and Don Don Miguel Ruiz he talks about that in his book The Four Agreements. He says that your brain has to be uh, your your brain has to be fertilized for certain ideas to be able to take hold so you know like right now i can say to you live life to the fullest you're going to die one day i could say that to you right now and of the 10 of you that are watching at this very moment and the hundreds of you that will watch this afterwards um, you know you might i might say that to you and you might just be like yeah i know eh, and just keep going and then i might like really say it to you again and just be like you're going to die someday, live life to the fucking fullest. And your brain might be a little more fertilized for that idea, for that seed to actually grow and, and for you to actually take action upon it. And so for me, my brain was super fucking fertilized for pickup. I discovered this shit. I watched every goddamn video. And like two days later, I was out fucking doing this shit, even though I was overweight. And then I came to the realization very shortly afterwards that, hey, this isn't going to work if you stay being a big, gross, fat lard. So I started, I kept doing pickup. And, and when I say doing pickup, I mean like running around and still getting wasted all the time. And, um, and just talking to girls now. I mean, that was like my version of starting off pickup. But then I started to really lose the weight. And as I started to lose the weight, my skin cleared up as well. And so I didn't have acne anymore. And so now I started to get like this totally crazy newfound confidence where like here and there I'm like making out with a girl here and there. I'm like dance. I'm like grinding on girls sometimes now. I'm not as fat as I was still, you know, 250, 260, whatever. But like I'm not as fat as I was. And so now I'm just getting like this brand new, just insane confidence that I'd never experienced before. And I just kept at it, man. I just kept at it, kept at it. Got into a relationship for about a year and a half, two years. And, you know, I'm not proud to say it, but, you know, during that time, I, I was, uh, you know, I, and I wasn't like a super crazy pickup guy at the time. I mean, I didn't plan on this being my life, you know. I mean, I really just, back then, it was like, holy shit, I've discovered a superpower. I've discovered this secret fucking society you know, as fucking Neil Strauss says, penetrating the secret society of pickup artists. And, you know, I felt that, man. I felt like I just discovered this crazy thing. And then uh, about four, five, about six months into the game, I was down to about 210 pounds. My skin was better. I think it was like 220, 220 right around there. My skin was better. I had slept with a few girls now at this point. I had slept with like five girls and uh, I had this, this blonde girl that I loved fucking, and she wanted to date me. So I dated her. So I dated her for about, it's like, it's kind of a weird timeline, because we were like doing, you know, we were like kind of dating for a while without making it official, then we made it official, and then after we broke up, we were still kind of seeing each other for a while. So it was like a one and a half to two year relationship. And um, during that time, I was still, I had a hard time, I couldn't like, I, don't, I didn't want to watch pickup videos anymore because pickup videos really made me like want to break up with this girl, but I loved her. I really fucking cared about her. But then, as soon as that breakup happened, then what actually ended up happening was pretty crazy was uh, this guy, Jared, that I talk about in some of my videos, right? I talk about my very first wing ever. I, I only had one wing and we, we ran around and we'd hammer it out, but... That guy, I never even, uh, I met him through stand-up comedy, and I never talked to him about pickup or the game or anything like that. 
And he came up to me one day and he goes, hey man, do you ever go out to pick up chicks? Because he, cause he inquired first. He said, hey, whatever happened to that girl? Because I would bring her to my comedy shows. And I'm like, oh, we broke up, man. Like, it's been, it's been really rough. Like, whatever. He goes, let me ask you something. Have you ever, uh, have you ever tried to, like, just go out and pick up chicks? And I'm like, whoa. I'm like, why are you asking me this? I was like, I, like, yeah. He's like, have you ever heard of a book called The Game? And I was like, dude, dude, what the, like, what do you mean? Like, are you, do you read The Game or something? He's like, yeah, I just started reading it. And, like, I really want to go out and try this. And I was like, dude, I used to be super heavy in the pickup. I used to fucking do this all the time. Like, I loved it. And he's like, let's go out together. So we just started going out. And this is like two years ago now. Um, we just started going out just crazy. Just fucking. And uh, around this time, I was starting to try to limit my alcohol consumption. So I'd be going out, uh, you know, some nights sober, some nights drinking. Some nights sober, some nights drinking. And we would just go out and do nothing but fucking day game and go out at night. We'd, like, we'd do day game, then we'd go to dinner, and then we'd go out at the night. And we just fucking hit it so hard for months and months and months. And that was when everything really changed. That Because because that insane period of immersion where all we did, like, we would actually, <laughs> it sounds so fucking gay, we would actually read, we would sit back and forth, and we would read The Art of Seduction. Like, we would take turns reading paragraphs and then out loud, and then we would, like, discuss the paragraph and how we were going to incorporate that into our game that night. So it was like this really just deep, like few, like six months of just massive immersion. And during that time, I started just pulling girls that like, like I started sleeping with girls where like every time, like every time that I would get one of these girls, like I, like I'd hook her and I'd be like, oh my God, it's working. Or We'd be like in an Uber on the way back to my house or in my car on the way back to my house. I'd be like, oh my God, it's fucking working. And then we'd get back to my house and she'd be fucking naked or I'd be like on top of her, like in fucking side of her. She'd be giving me head or something. And I'd be like, oh my fucking God, this is working. I would be like, I'm like, I'll, like I still have that sometimes, but just like anything else, it's sort of like, when you've learned these techniques and this practice and you do it over and over and over again, it becomes less of a novel experience. And so I don't experience that sort of emotion as much anymore. But back then, I mean, I won't even like, dude, like, I'll ne like <laughs> this one girl I took to a fucking day two, I took to a day two at this bar that I go to all the time, the game, and I take all my day twos there. And it's because it's, it's like five blocks. It's five blocks from my house now. It was two blocks from where I used to live. So it's still a very short distance from my house. But like this one girl, I'll never fucking forget. Like I went in to game her and it was at a time where like she was so hot that I just went in to game her because it was kind of going to be funny. Like it wasn't even like, oh, I really think I'm going to get this girl. It was like, oh, I'm going to go in just like, you know, for the reference experience. My confidence wasn't even at that level yet. You know, one of the things we talk about in a lot of these videos is your, your brain needs proof, not promises. And so I didn't have the proof that I could sleep with a girl with like that yet. And so I couldn't just promise myself, you're enough, you're the prize. And this girl, I just remember, I, I went up and I'm just fucking around and having fun with her. And before you know it, I'm getting real physical. I'm seeing a lot of indicators of interest from her. And again, my brain is just, oh my God, it's working. And then she goes, she goes, come on, let's dance. And we go out to the dance floor and we start dancing and she's grinding on me. And she's like, kind of like, kind of like, look, she looks like a basic white girl, kind of, but not in a bad way. Just very like thin, great tits, but like just like a, like this brunette, kind of like basic college girl. And uh, she, she ended up being uh, the same age as me and we... We get out there and we start dancing and stuff. And I turn around and I start making out with her and all this stuff, whatever. And I try to pull her and she won't come home with me. But she's like, take down my phone number. Take down my phone number. Hit me up tomorrow. I hit her up and we go on the day two. And the day two, I'm nervous, dude. I'm like, I'm nervous to go on this day two with this girl. And I, I'm like shaking going into it. And we're on the day two and I'm, I'm nervous the whole time. I don't feel like I ever really hit my basic social comfort levels of just like vibing and things like that. I just didn't really feel like it ever was that, uh, that smooth of an operation really. And I'll never forget just in the final moments where I kind of was just like, yeah, this probably isn't going to happen. I was just like, fuck it, dude. 
And so what I did is I closed out the check and I, I paid for our meal and stuff. We had a little meal and, uh, and I can't recall if I was drinking at the time. I, I don't remember if we had had any drinks or not. I, I genuinely can't remember. It was a long time ago and it was during that period, like I said, where I was drinking sometimes and sometimes not. So, and I'll never forget, I just, I asked the waiter or the waitress for the check and uh, she brings it over and I start putting, uh, I start putting, uh, you know, my hoodie on or, or whatever I was wearing and um, I just uh, grab her by the hand and we start walking and we walk to my house and no words are spoken at all about where we're going, what are we doing, nothing. She just very clearly knew what was up and we get into my apartment and uh, we immediately sit on my bed. Something that I've heard from a lot of old school game guys is to not have a chair in your room so there's nowhere to sit other than the bed. Which I thought was, you know, and it, it works. It's like an old school game concept, but it definitely works. And we sit on my bed, and uh, I'll never forget. I just start kind of like supplicating. I'm just like, I really had a good time with you. And she's like, did you? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, she's like, I had a really good time with you. And then I just start fucking grabbing her, making out with her. And again, I'm like, oh my god, like this is really about to like, I'm about to actually sleep with her. And then, uh, yeah, like, we're just, we, it just starts getting hotter and heavier. And she kind of takes off her little jacket that she was wearing, and I, we just clothes start coming off. And before you know it, I'm just fucking this girl that I just never fucking thought it would ever happen. I don't know what I would call her, an eight or a nine. I, I wouldn't. I